Immune surveillance is the idea that certain white blood cells of our immune system are continually and constantly keeping a watchful eye for any abnormal cells that might develop in our body and these abnormal cells might develop as a result of some type of pathogenic infection or they might develop as a result of some type of carcinogens. So when healthy cells are exposed to carcinogens such as chemical agents, pathogenic agents or radiation, for example UV or X-ray radiation, the healthy cells can essentially become cancer cells. Now how exactly does a healthy cell become a cancer cell? Well, these carcinogens essentially affect the DNA molecules within our healthy cells. And when we develop a mutation in our DNA molecule, we change the sequence of nucleotides on that DNA. And that ultimately codes for different proteins and that can influence the functionality of the cell. Now, we develop a cancer cell when our abnormal cell essentially loses its ability to control the way that it divides. And that's exactly why cancer cells divide rapidly and uncontrollably and eventually form large visible masses we call tumors. And because these tumors are so large, they can affect the way that our body functions and they can ultimately kill that organism, kill that individual. The question is, not everybody actually develops cancer in their lifetime. And because on a daily basis, we produce anywhere from several to a thousand of these different cancer cells, how exactly does our immune surveillance system, our immune system in general, actually detect these cancer cells and destroy these cancer cells? Well, since these cancer cells have a slightly different sequence of nucleotides on their DNA, they will produce slightly different proteins. And these different proteins that end up on the membrane of these cancer cells can be read by certain white blood cells as being foreign antigens. And when these white blood cells locate these foreign antigens found on the cancer cells, they can basically mark or label these cancer cells cells for destructions. So let's actually discuss what the different types of cells are in our immune system that basically are used to control and destroy these cancer cells. So even though the immune system as a whole functions to detect and destroy these cancer cells, two particularly important types of white blood cells involved in the process of destroying infected and cancer cells are natural killer cells as well as cytotoxic T cells also known as killer T cells and these are two different types of white blood cells. So let's begin with natural killer cells. So natural killer cells are specialized lymphocytes and they have granules that carry digestive enzymes as we'll see in just a moment and these granules, these vesicles play an important role in destroying those cancer cells. Now let's recall the important point. So the majority of the white blood cells in our immune system are able to differentiate normal cells from abnormal cells as well as communicate with one another as a result of these special protein complexes found on the immune cells and our normal cells of our body known as the major histocompatibility complex MHC and we have several classes for example we have MHC class 1 and we have MHC class 2. Class 1 is used to differentiate abnormal cells from healthy cells and class 2 is used to actually communicate between the white blood cells. So virtually all cells in our body, all white blood cells require these major histocompatibility complexes to actually interact with one another and to detect these abnormal cells. But the very unique thing about natural killer cells, which by the way are part of the innate immunity of our immune system, 
the, the, the very unique thing about these natural killer cells is that they don't actually need the major histocompatibility complex to actually find what our abnormal cell actually is, unlike most other cells of our body, including cytotoxic T cells, the other white blood cell that destroys cancer cells. And this is a good thing because sometimes the cancer cells or infected cells lose the ability to create the MHC class 1 or the MHC class 2 complex and that means it no longer contains these complexes on their membrane and that makes it virtually invisible to all the cells of our body or the white blood cells that require the MHC class 1 or class 2 to actually detect those cells. So the special thing about these natural killer cells is that they can bind and destroy these cancer cells regardless of whether or not they have the MHC complex on the membrane. So once again, Natural killer cells are lymphocytes that are part of our innate immunity. Now, majority of the white blood cells of our immune system can only recognize an abnormal cell, such as a cancer cell, if it contains an antigen that is bound onto the MHC, the major histocompatibility complex membrane protein. However, natural, C, uh, natural killer cells are the exception. They are unique because they do not require the presence of the major histocompatibility complex on the membrane of that particular abnormal cell. Interestingly, some infected or cancer cells sometimes are missing the MHC entirely from their membrane, which makes them virtually invisible to all the other white blood cells of our body except these natural killer cells. So let's take a look at the following diagram and examine exactly what the mechanism is by which the natural killer cell detects as well as destroys our cancer cells. So when cells display little or no MHC proteins on their membrane, then that triggers the natural killer cell to basically approach and bind onto that cancer cell. So in this particular case, we have a normal cell, a normal cell, and a normal cell that contains a normal antigen, a normal self antigen shown in green, as well as the MHC class 1 complex shown in brown. But the this cancer cell loses the proper sequence of nucleotides to create the proper protein known as the MHC class 1 and so we have none of these MHC class 1 proteins found on the membrane and that is what triggers the natural killer cell to approach this cancer cell, bind to it and begin releasing these granules that contain digestive enzymes and these digestive enzymes poke holes inside the membrane of the cancer cell and that lyses and destroys the cell. And then a macrophage can swim by and pick up that remaining debris that essentially came from that lysed cell. Now, what about cytotoxic T cells, also known as killer T cells? So, we said that natural killer cells are part of the innate immunity because they destroy in a non-specific way. They are not looking for any specific cell, they're looking for any abnormal cell, including cancer cells and infected cells. On the other hand, cytotoxic T cells are part of the adaptive Im immunity and that's because they are looking for specific infected cells, which also includes cancer cells, that contain specific foreign antigens on the membrane. So these cytotoxic T cells actually need the MH cla MHC class 1 to bind onto that infected or abnormal cell. So these cytotoxic T cells contain special T cell receptors along with a CD8 glycoprotein that is needed to bind to the MHC class 1 complex. So let's take a look at the following diagram to see what the mechanism is by which the cytotoxic T cell actually kills off and finds 
finds and kills off that cancer cell. So we have normal cells of our body that display the normal self antigen shown in green on that MHC class one complex. And we have this cancer cell that still has the MHC class one complex. Remember, not all cancer cells actually destroy the MHC class one complex. Some of them still actually have them. And in this case, the cancer cell will now display a pathogenic, a foreign antigen on that MHC class one complex. And now this is when the cytotoxic T cell comes into play. It has the CD8 glycoprotein and the complementary T cell receptor that can basically bind onto this particular specific antigen and onto the MH uh, C class one complex. And once they are bound, the cytotoxic T cell basically does the same exact thing that the natural killer cell does. It releases these digestive proteins that poke holes in the membrane and lice and destroy that cell. So these are the two different types of white blood cells that make up the immunosurveillance system of our body. So this is the system by which these white blood cells are continually trying to find these abnormal cells of our body such as cancer cells as well as our infected cells that might be infected by some type of outside pathogen. So the major difference between our natural killer cell and our cytotoxic T cell is the cytotoxic T cell only binds to the MHC class one complex while our natural killer cell can bind to a cell that doesn't have that MHC class one complex. And that's very important because sometimes these infected or cancer cells lose the ability to create these complexes that hold the antigens. And so we won't find any of these complexes on on our membrane and they will become virtually invisible to all cells of our body including these cytotoxic T cells but the exception is the natural killer cell these will be able to locate these cancer cells these abnormal cells and release these digestive enzymes that lice and destroy those cancer cells